الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Second part of our program: Deaths and Loans, uh, Rules and Etiquettes. So basically, there is some, there are some basic principles that we need to know about loans. And the pre basic principle in Islam that loans are strictly benevolent. So it's a, it's a virtuous act that doesn't provide for any compensation for the lender. And this principle, the ulama, when they talk about it, they mention a statement. It's a very famous statement. كُلُّ قَرْضٍ جَرَّ نَفْعًا فَهُوَ رِبَا كُلُّ قَرْضٍ جَرَّ نَفْعًا فَهُوَ رِبَا Basically, it means any loan that generates benefits for the lender or that exclusively generates, uh, generates benefits for the lender is considered a form of riba. So this is a basic principle in Islamic Sharia. So the, the lender is not supposed to get any extra money for his loan from the borrower, this is number one. And number two, he's not supposed to get any favor or gift from the borrower. This is the conclusion. Now, there are two exceptions for this rule. There are two exceptions. The first exception, the borrower is allowed to give extra money or a gift to the lender at the time of repaying the debt. Not during the period of the loan, no, at the time of repaying him without any pre-agreement, without any stipulation. Why? Because the Rasul Sallallahu said, in a famous hadith, he said, إِنَّ خِيَارَ النَّاسِ أَحْسَنُهُمْ قَضَاءً He said, verily, the best among people, the best among people are those who repay their debts handsomely. And this hadith is in Sahih Muslim. And uh, he made this statement, because the Sahabi gave someone something better. Yani he borrowed someone, something from someone else at the time of repaying him. He didn't find something equivalent, so he paid him back with something better. And Rasulullah said, this is not riba, actually this is something good. And then he made this statement at the end, in khiyar al-nasi, ahsanuhum qada, and verily the best among people are those who repay their debts handsomely. Number two, the second exception, if both parties had the habit of exchanging gifts, their family members, their friends, close friends, for example. If they have the habit of exchanging favors or gifts, then it is permissible for the borrower to give a gift to the lender during the period of the loan because there is no shubha here. It's not a recompensation for the loan because they had the habit of exchanging those gifts or favors before, before they made the transaction. So this is the second exception. Now there is a question, some people might say, that this principle, كُلُّ قَرْضٍ جَرَّ نَفْعًا فَهُوَ riba, came in a weak hadith. There are people who are, say this, that came, it was narrated in a weak hadith. And the answer, yes. It is, it was narrated in a weak, had, a weak hadith, hadith da'if, but the ulama have agreed, agreed that its meaning is true. Based on other proofs, based on other proofs, they believed, and there is ijma, scholarly consensus, that the meaning of this hadith or this basic principle is true. مثلاً, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَإِن تُبْتُمْ فَلَكُمْ رُؤُوسُ أَمْوَالِكُمْ لَا تَظْلِمُونَ وَلَا تُظْلَمُونَ When talking about riba, if you go to the page, one page actually, the ayat from 275 to 281, the whole page is talking about the dangers of riba. Within this page, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, but if you repent, then for you is your capital. For you is your capital, that means you don't do something, you don't take something extra above your capital. The capital of the debt or the, or the, or the capital of the loan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, do not wrong and you will not be wrong. لا تظلمون ولا تظلمون. So this is from the Quran. From another hadith, 
Rasulullah sallallahu said, and this is in Ibn Majah, advising people who take loans or deal with debts. He said, if one of you takes a loan from someone and, the la the, and, and he gives him, the borrower gives him a gift or a favor or a right, offers a right, subhanAllah, look at the statement of Rasulullah sallallahu He offers him a ride on his riding beast. He should not accept the gift or the ride. <laughs> um, this is a hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Unless they used to treat each other in that manner beforehand. Before they, you know, they deal, they, they, they made this transaction, they used to actually give favors to each other, they used to help each other, they used to give, give to, gifts to each other, then that's okay. And I, I, I can I, يعني, I can testify to that, يعني, subhanallah. Uh, يعني, one time I remember I had a personal experience. I gave a loan to someone within a few days, three days. He called me and he wanted to give me a favor. And I never received this favor from him. And subhanallah, immediately I thought about, about what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. So it could happen. That someone feels like he wants to give you something for, as a recompensation for your loan. So, even min uqud al ihsan, it is a strictly benevolent. The lender is not supposed to benefit from his loan. Now, loans in modern economy, there are many loans that we deal with them. Sometimes we don't recognize them as loans. For example, and this is a, a basic, uh, basic knowledge, bonds. Senadet. Someone asked me, sent me an email, and I'm not sure if he meant these bonds in the market, in the stock market, or he meant uh, bonds that are related, that are bought through um, RESP and RSP. I'll mention them, inshallah, if, if, if this is what he meant. But I promised last halaqa to answer your questions. So I'll we'll start with bonds here. But then there are two ways for firms or, uh, or corporations or government to raise, raise funds in the, in, the, in the financial market by issuing debt instruments, and they are called bonds, or by issuing, uh, by, by dealing with equity securities, with, uh, they are called stocks. Now, this debt instrument represents a contractual agreement between the borrower who is obliged to pay the holder of the in instrument, certain fixed amount of money on particular intervals, yani every three months, every six months. It depends on the agreement, it depends on the bond. And this is a pure interest. So bonds in the stock market are not halal, it's a, it's a loan that generates interest. And upon maturity, at the time of maturity, the borrower will, uh, will pay the principal amount to the, to the investors. Number two, bank deposits. There are some Muslims who don't know the classification or the definition of bank deposits in the Islamic Sharia. And here, uh, the, our ulama in the International Islamic Fiqh Academy, there is a shibh ijma'. Yani there is almost a, a scholarly consensus between Muslim scholars in modern times that bank deposits are a form, are a form of loan. It's a loan. The bank doesn't need your loan, but it is a loan. Because if it was a wadi'ah, your intention is to deposit money for safekeeping, right? This is our intention. But in Sharia, when you give something to someone for safekeeping, he's not supposed to use it. And he doesn't guarantee your, your amana, your money or any other item that you keep it with him. He doesn't guarantee it unless there is a proof that uh, a proof of negligence, that he was negligent, that he didn't do the due, you know, uh, diligence to protect your amana or your money or whatever you gave him for safekeeping, right? So here we do it with this intention. We deposit this money to protect it, to save it in the bank for protection because you cannot save, keep your money at home. But here the bank does not, the, the bank deals with it. They, they actually, they do business with your money. It's called financial intermediation. 
So here, this International Islamic Fiqh Academy, it's a very famous, very renowned organization, uh, has made a decision in April 1995. They said uh, these deposits are loans from a fiqhi perspective. These deposits are loans from Sharia perspective. And any interest that is earned through these bank accounts is a form of riba. Now what else is forbidden from the benefits received by bank customers? We receive gifts sometimes, right? They tell you open an account, deposit some money in it, and you get an iPad. Or you get a gift from the bank. Now there are two types of gift, uh, gifts here, Ikhwan. Gifts that are exclusively given to some customers for opening an account and depositing a certain amount of money, then these gifts are not permissible. It's a form of riba. Because they're giving you this gift for opening this account and giving them this loan. It's a bank deposit, but it is a loan. So these gifts are exclusively given to those account holders. Now, the gifts that are given to all customers, like pens, like notepads, all customers, regardless of what you do with them, what kind of transaction you do with them, they will give you these gifts. These gifts are halal. You can take these pens or these notepads or writing pads or anything that is given to all customers. They are not, these gifts are not exclusively given to those account holders, right? So you see the difference between these types of gifts, Ikhwan? Number three is margin trading. Margin trading refers to the practice of using borrowed funds from, from, uh, from broker to trade a financial asset. This financial asset could be a bond, could be a stock, could be anything. And margin refers to the, uh, the amount of money that you deposit when you open an account with a broker so there is a broker here, a company, financial company, it could be a bank. You open an account for them, investment account. And you want to do margin trading, and you want to borrow money from this bank or financial institution. You deposit some money, like they tell you the minimum method and, uh, deposit, you have to deposit $1,000 or $2,000 or $3,000 so you can uh, get some a loan from them. With their loan and your money, you start trading. So this is called margin uh, trading. Now, borrowing money is not without any cost. They will charge you interest. The first problem is interest. They give you money as a loan. You don't carry it in your hand, but it is in your account. And online, you can use it to, uh, to, uh, to trade. So the first problem with this kind of transactions is interest that you receive from the bank or the financial institution. The second problem that many Muslims and non-Muslims do not pay to it, do not pay attention to it, because there are some non-Muslims in certain uh, markets. They try to provide some Sharia compliant products. And they're in their minds, in their understanding, riba is only the uh, amount that is above the capital, the, the increase that is above the capital, extra money that you receive as a depositor for your money, for example. Right? So here, uh, uh, the second problem is the combination between a loan and between a sale. And this is a form of riba, or it might open door for riba. And Rasulullah clearly forbade this, this kind of arrangement. So now what kind of sale is involved here? Because you need to pay the broker. You're making a deal with him. You're making a transaction agreement with him that you pay him commissions. And you pay him fees for trading through his platform, right? At the same time, you're taking a loan from him. So you're combining between a loan and a sale. And Rasulullah in a famous hadith, يقول نهى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عن سلف وبيع يعني the combination رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم forbade uh, the arrangement of a loan combined with a sale why what could be the problem here could you tell me if I make an arrangement with you I'll tell you okay you ask me to give you a loan I'll tell you okay I'll give you a loan but I want to buy your car could you sell me your car I'm not going to give you a loan unless you sell me your car. 
Here the broker, he said, he doesn't give you the loan unless you trade through his platform. Now, if you tell, I tell you this, what could happen? You might sell me the car. First of all, this is a benefit. I wanted your car, so I'm willing to give you a loan, but I want to buy your car. The other option is you might actually decrease the price. Decrease the price because you, I'm giving you a loan, so you decrease the price because you, are, you feel like embarrassed. You, mean you want to give me a good deal because I gave you a loan. <laughs> so Sharia wants us to be very transparent and to separate between different transactions. Don't take advantage of your brother or the other party. Just because you are giving a him a loan, you're trying to push him, embarrass him to sell you your car or sell you another item, mullah, and then he might, as, a, as I said, give you a good, a good uh, deal because he got a loan from you. He feels embarrassed, right? At the end of the loan, as I said, at the end of repayment is, is, is a different story. But anyway, Rasul clearly forbade the combination between a sale and a loan. In Forex markets, for example, non-Muslims who are providing this Islamic Forex account, they don't pay attention to this. They don't know that Rasulullah you know, forbade the combination between a sale and between a loan. And these are brokers, brokers who give this product and they tell Muslims this is a fully Sharia compliant. The only thing they remove is the overnight charges. They are a form of interest. If someone but then he keeps uh, po his position open, he doesn't close it before 5 o'clock. They charge them overnight charges. And they said, you are a Muslim, we'll give you a Sharia compliant account, Islamic account. And then, but they don't pay attention to this, that there is a combination between a sale and between a loan. The number four, what is called in the, in the banks, in the banking system, or banking industry is bank overdraft or overdraft protection. So if you miscalculate your balance or you forget to deposit your money and you write a check for someone, right? Your check could be bounced and you'll be charged a penalty between $35 and $45, maybe $50. But if to avoid these fees or these penalties, the, the bank may, might offer the customers what is called overdraft protection, and it is a form of loan. Basically, if you're, you write a check to someone, and, or they call it NSF, non-sufficient funds, right? And yet, instead of bouncing your check, the bank will cover the rest. You have in the account only 1,000, but you check, your check is 1,500. And your customer or the person you wrote a check to took the check to the bank, right? And he needs 1,500. 1,500, but you have only 1,000 in the account. If you have this overdraft protection, the 500 will come through from, from the bank, and it is a form of loan, and they will charge you interest for it. Now, number five is credit cards, ya Juan. Credit cards. There are halal credit cards, but all of them are prepaid. <laughs> All of them are prepaid. So Bank of Montreal, CIBC, they are offering uh, prepaid credit cards. And CIBC is, is having a card called Smart Prepaid Visa Card. Someone, a brother from BC, he told me I'm using it, I'm happy with it, it's serving my purpose and it's, uh, it's fulfilling my needs, alhamdulillah. But there are some, if you read the frequently asked questions, you go through them, they tell you that some, yes, you are allowed to book a, a hotel room with it, you make a reservation with it, but some companies might actually ask you to use a real credit card. Number one, this is number one problem. Number two problem, some companies, they might charge you an extra 20, not, they don't charge you, but they, they, uh, they put a hold on 20%, they add extra 20% to it, from your account because it's a prepaid, right? And if there is no, not enough money in your account, the transaction could be declined. So these are issues that are there with this prepaid card, but they are halal. They don't charge you interest. The only thing they charge you around $7 fees. And they tell you clearly no interest 
because if there is no money in your account, this credit card will not, will not work. The transaction will be declined. Some people are using them. Some brothers and sisters are using them, and they said they are working for us. So they're using them as credit cards. There are some other brothers who told me this from Toronto area. They told me actually in Toronto, if you, this prepaid credit cards don't help you to build a credit history. They said in Toronto area, some of the, uh, the landlords, they don't rent, don't rent their apartments or their houses to someone who doesn't have a good credit. So these credit cards don't help you to build a good credit history. These are the issues that are related to these halal credit cards. Um, the ulama here, they are clear about it. They said the agreement is an interest-based agreement because the, 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 the agreement says that if you are late, they will charge you interest. Uh, everyone knows this, right? But they are saying uh, you can use one card there's one brother who asked me this question. If you feel that you have a pressing need, pressing need, so don't swipe it with every transaction. There are people who use it to buy milk with it, to buy bread, to buy coffee with it, and this is not right. I don't believe this is the right thing to do. And I know brothers and sisters who opened this door for themselves, and they ended up with 30,000 debts, 30,000, 40,000, and they know that they are now, they have to pay interest, they don't have money to pay, and then they come to the Imam asking for an exit. So now if you know that you cannot control your expenses, you cannot control yourself, maybe you should stay away from it. But if you think yani, uh, that you, there is a pressing need for it, that you need it, you need to, have, to at least have one card in your pocket, you can have it with the intention of paying on time, with the intention of paying on time, and don't swipe it for everything, with every transaction. Use it only when, when you go to some parking areas, you don't, they don't accept a debit, and you don't have cash in your maximum. For example, as I said, uh, you need to do make a reservation, they don't accept a prepaid, then you can use the other card. Wallahu ta'ala alam. You have to be extremely careful for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now these are different loans in the modern economy. Now let's talk about some matters that are related to loans and debts. Number one, the sale of debt, bay'uddain. The sale of debt. So you have a debt, you are a creditor, someone owes you money. In some cases, in some places, in some markets, you can sell this debt to someone else to a third party with a discount. But the sale of debt is not allowed in Sharia. It's not allowed in Sharia. And if a person, or, 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 or a business has a debt receivable from another party, they are not allowed to sell it with a discount. Usually they sell it with a discount. They sell it with a discount because they want cash. Because this debt obligation is not due yet. He has to wait for one year to receive his money. He doesn't want to wait for one year. He doesn't want to wait for six months. So he would sell this debt and get cash instantly in your hand, in his hand. This is the purpose of doing this. So now the traditional Muslim jurists are unanimous on this point that the sale of debt at a discount is not permissible in Sharia, and it is tantamount to riba. Because in debt in, in, in monetary terms is money. Is money, right, Ikhwan? So exchanging money with money, if it is the same denomination in Sharia, if you're dealing with the same currency, Canadian dollars or American dollars, it has to be at par value. It has to be exchanged at par value. Let's see, Canadian with Canadian, right? You might do it for any other purpose. You have $100, for example and you want to exchange it, you want change. It has to be at par value, otherwise it will be, it is a form of riba. Now has the, how this sale of debt is happening in the market now in our modern financial system, there is something called bills of exchange. They are sold sometimes at discount. They sell at traders or merchants or business people. 
It's like a check, but it is usually used for business operations. You know, people who have uh, the business people, they know what I'm talking about. So they write these bills of exchange, right? Is a written order from someone to another one, but it might be post-dated, right? So the person, the other person doesn't want to wait. He wants to, he wants cash in his hand. So he goes to the bank. Since it is a well-respected document, the bank will accept it. And it, the bank feels that it is a secure document. They will accept this bill of exchange. And then the, uh, method, the amount 100,000, they will give the customer who is carrying or holding this bill of exchange, let's say 95,000 or 96,000. What is the profit of the bank here? Is the difference. The difference because at the time when this bill of exchange is due, then the, the bank will get its money, the full amount, which is 100,000. So the profit of this bank is around 3,000 or 4,000. That's an example. Also what is called similar, uh, similar uh, there is a similar concept uh, uh, that many people, not business people, anyone can do it, which, uh, which is called check discounting or check cashing services. You are aware of that, Money Mart and those companies. So you have a post-dated check. You don't want to wait to cash this check. You go to these places. They will take a percentage, a discount. They will not give you the full amount. There is no point for them to do this business for you, right? They take your check, they give you, uh, you know, they don't give you the full, full amount. They give you, they take 15% or, or it depends. Maybe every, every company is different or 10% from, from, your, from your check. They give you the rest of the money. When the check is due, then they will cash the check and they will take, take the full amount. So this is a sale of debt. There is something else that may, maybe many people are not, are not aware of, uh, what we call today, and it's a tax season, tax income preparation services. So they file your taxes, and then you could get your refund instantly, but they don't give you the full amount. Because when they file, when your taxes are filed, and you have the right to receive a refund from CRA, you become a creditor. There is a debt obligation that is established here. You become the creditor and the, and the CRA is a debtor. They owe you money. They have to pay you like $500. But you don't want to wait for two weeks for CRA to deposit this $500 in your account. This is what people do. They go and file their taxes through these companies. They're called tax income preparation services. They take 15% from the first $300. And then they take 3% or 5% from the rest of the money. So if you owe, if CRA owes you like 1,000, for example, your refund is 1,000, which is a good amount of money, right? From the first 300, they take 15%. And the rest 700, they take 5%, right? So they take this amount and that will be their profit for giving you instantly cash in your hand, right? This is a sale of debt because that was your debt. CRA owed you money, right? That was your debt. You sold it, you decide to sell it to this company, right? So at a discount, at a discount. So the ulama, the classical scholars are unanimous on this point that this is not permissible. Number four, there are some builders selling the debt receivable from a customer to a third party at a discount. This is something that people in Toronto area, they told me it's very popular. I don't know here in Calgary, but I mean, it's possible for some people to do it here. I mean, I, I don't see a difference. If it is being done in Toronto area, it should be done here too. But I didn't meet people who told me that they are doing it, builders. So the method, they say a builder is building a house for a customer. And the, 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 the price, for example, or the, the value of this house is half a million, let's say, to be paid within six months or fully paid within one year. But the builder needs cash. So he doesn't want to wait for this, to receive this half a million, right, after one year. He will sell this debt. There's a debt obligation here. There's a contract between the builder and the customer who wants the house. So he would sell this package, the whole package, at a discount. He would sell it 460, for example, to another investor. 
So this investor will give him 460, and then he will wait. Uh, at the end of the year, he will receive half a million. How much was his profit? 40,000. And that is not permissible in the Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the first matter that we need to pay attention to regarding debts and loans. Paying back the loan with a different currency. There are people who ask about this. Are we allowed to pay our loans with a different currency? Now we need to know that the basic principle in Sharia is that loans should be repaid in the same currency as they were taken by the borrower. Unless the two parties agree to make the repayment in a different currency. It is permissible with some conditions. What are the conditions that we need to pay attention to? Now, uh, the first condition is the ulama, they said it is permissible to pay your loan or repay your loan in a different currency as long as there are three conditions or three conditions are met. First one, there should be no pre-agreement between the two parties to pay it in a different currency. What is the problem here? If he gives him the loan, I give the loan to my brother, 1,000 Canadian dollars, right? But I tell him, okay, at the time you pay me six months later, but I want American dollar, American dollars. What is the problem here? There is an exchange. So you agreed on making an exchange and what is the problem? Naam? You, you don't have to fix the rate. You can agree, just agree. You don't have to fix the rate, just agree, make an agreement that the repayment will be with a different currency. Currency to different currency. That's sale. Hmm. A sale and a loan. I don't know. Allah I don't see it from that perspective. But there is a problem. There is a deep problem regarding riba. When we do exchange, when it, when we exchange currencies, yes, brother. The same day has to happen. Yeah. The, the 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 delivery, the possession has to be immediate. It's halal to buy and sell money, currency, but it has to be immediate. Whether you receive it in your hand or it is deposited immediately in your bank account and you have immediate access to it. So when I give my brother a loan with one currency and tell him oh, after one month I want to receive a different currency, you need to repay me with a different currency, I am making an exchange but there is a delay in what? In the possession, right? This is number one. So the two parties cannot agree on this. Now the second condition, they said the rate of exchange at the time of repayment should be the current rate of exchange. The current. At the time of repaying the loan, not at the time he took the loan from me or I gave him the loan. So he took the loan from me one month ago. That's a different rate of exchange, right? But I am paying him or he's paying me the loan today. So Rasulullah said that it has to be at the current rate of exchange. And they cannot, if they agree to exchange to do the payment in a different currency, at the time of the repayment, they cannot leave a portion of the loan to be repaid later. Because they agreed to make the repayment in a different currency, right? What is the proof? The proof is the famous hadith of Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, Ibn Umar, the son of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu. He said, I used to sell camels for dinars to be paid at a later date. But accept dirhams. They used to use dinars and dirhams. So he would sell with dinars. It's a credit sale. Then after that, he would accept dirhams as instead of dinars. The customer would tell him, I don't have dinars, can I pay you in dirhams? And Ibn Umar would accept dirhams instead of dinars. Or he would sell his camels with dirhams 
And at the time of the repayment, the person or the customer tells him, says, I don't have, I don't have dirhams. Can I give you, pay you in dinars? And he would accept dinars, right? Then he went to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he told him about this practice. So he said, there is nothing wrong with taking it based on the current price. So long as you do not separate with something outstanding, and there's something left, you agree on paying it in a different currency, don't leave anything, pay everything on the same day with the current rate of exchange. Because if I pay, if, I, if we, if I allow him methanin to, to fix the rate, he might methanin increase the rate and he might benefit from the loan. Or if I give him my own rate, I might lower the rate and what, what will happen? I make zulm to him. I treat him with injustice. But if I give him the same, the current, the current rate of exchange, if he takes the loan from me and it goes to the market, it will be the same, his money. He will receive the amount of his money that he gave it to me as a loan. You see the, the problem where here? You see the point? Huh? Are you able to see here the, the, shari the adala, the justice of sharia? Huh? Okay. At the end, inshallah, we'll talk about these things. Uh, I'll, I'll allow you to ask questions, inshallah. Now, loans at the time of death, someone owes someone money or other people owe him money. He's either a creditor or a debtor. And he died, he passed away. So Imam al-Shafi'i, rahmatullahi alayhi, has told us about the principle in his book, Al-Umm. I will say it in Arabic and then translate it. He said, إِذَا مَاتَ الرَّجُلُ وَلَهُ عَلَى النَّاسِ دُيُونٌ إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ فهي إلى أجلها لا تحل بموته ولو كانت الديون على الميت إلى أجل فلا أعلم مخالفا حفظت عنه ممن لقيت بأنها حالة. So Imam Shafi'i told us about a basic principle regarding loans and debts at the time of death. Uh, at the time of death, sorry, at the time of death. So he said, if someone dies. And other people and his creditor, yani other people, sorry, owe him money. What will happen? Uh, no, he owes, uh, yes, uh, other people owe him money. Then, Then the inheritors or his family have to respect the deadline. They cannot come to these people and tell them, you have to pay us this loan immediately. Because our father died and we need this money. But then they were supposed to pay him after six months. And he died today. His family cannot Islamically go to the, the, the debtors and tell them, you owed our father, let's say $10,000. You are not, they are not allowed to do that. They have to respect the agreement that their father made with these debtors. You see the difference? But the opposite, in the case where he owed other people money. When he owed other people money and he died, then the, his family has to pay his debt, they have to pay, they have to pay his debt from his inheritance immediately. So they spend on his, they have to deal with the expenses of al janaza. number one, this is the first haqq. Uh, and then number two, they have to look into his debts and they need to pay his debts. Why? What's the difference? What's the difference between the two cases? Yes, give me. He might be punished. punished. They, they have to relieve their father from this obligation. He passed away. You know that I told you that, I don't know if I told you this in the first part, that Rasulullah didn't want to offer janazah prayer for someone who had a, had a debt, died with a debt, right? He wanted to actually to encourage Muslims not to uh, keep, uh, to pay debt, to pay their debts, right? But subhanAllah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, gave him money and he's, um, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fatah alayhi, yani he opened the doors of his mercy for him, he started actually paying the debts of those who couldn't pay their debts, those who died. At the time of janazah, if he knows that the person has left some debts, he would pay from his pocket, alayhi salatu wasalam. قال أنا أولى بالمسلمين. So anyway, uh, this is the difference between the two cases. In the first case, the the family members or the the family of the deceased have to respect his agreements with his debtors, and they have to wait for them to pay, whether it is six months, one year. But if he owed other people money, then they need to relieve their family member from this obligation and pay his debt immediately. And Imam al-Shafi'i, he said, I don't know any other scholar at my time who disagreed with this. And Imam al-Shafi'i, he was a great scholar, but he was talking also about other scholars who lived, and they were highly qualified who lived during his time. Now, I'll, I'll tell you about some alternative, halal alternatives to good loans and interest-based loans. You know, there are people who, of course, yeah, any Muslim is not supposed to take an interest-based loan, right? But sometimes some Muslims also feel embarrassed to go to a friend or a family member to ask for a loan, a good loan, Qard Hassan. What are the other alternatives that are available there? So there is something called tawarruq, an idea, just if you want to do it. I mean, it's an idea. Keep it in mind, if you need it, you might do it. Something called tawarruq, and it's halal. What is this tawarruq? It was very popular in the old days when people didn't have banks and kada. If he doesn't want to go and to a family member or friend and ask him for a loan, he would go to someone who has an item of value. Matter and let's say something that costs, uh, that has a value of $10,000, $10,000 for example. And he would make an agreement to buy it from him on a credit sale. So when people make credit sale, they increase the price. The brother was talking about murabaha. Remind me to talk about murabaha if you want, if you wish. So they increase the price. So instead of selling it to him for 10,000, he would sell it to him for 12,000. And it is halal if they agree on that. Time value of money is permissible in this case, in Islam. So time value of money is not permissible in Islam except in two cases. This case and a salam, a salam is a different story. It's a different uh, type of sales. So here he has a debt obligation, right? It's a credit sale. So the agreement, he makes an agreement with this person to pay him every month, for example, 1,000 Canadian dollars. And then he goes to the market and he will sell this item for a cash price, which is 10,000. What happened here? He received in his hand 10,000 and it's halal. <coughs> yes, he has a debt obligation. He will be paying the other person 1,000 every month, right? But at least he needed money in his hand and he got this 10,000, right? This is called tawarruq. What, what if he sell it for eight, not 10? It's halal. halal. Yeah. You can sell it with the same price, you can sell it with less, you can sell it with uh, 10. This is an example, <laughs> just an example. This is happening in my country, people they buy and they even lose 50%, 40%. And it's up to him. He might sell it more. If he's able to say it for 13,000, it's halal. For 15,000, it's halal. For less, it's halal. It's up to him. Because the moment he made this credit sale, then this item becomes his own property. Now this is your own property. This car is your own property. You go to the market or someone else and you sell it to him with any price you want. This is what you want. You want cash money in your hand, this is halal. You got cash money in your, in your hand. There is another form, another option, which is haram, it's called bay'ul ina. It's the same thing. They used to do with some people in the past. I don't know nowadays that I, I heard that some financial institutions in some countries are doing this, but I'm not sure about it. This is called Bay al -Ina. So he would make a credit sale with him for 12,000, for example, right? This is a debt obligation. Now he has to pay him 12,000. 
on a credit sale, it's a deferred payment. Every month he will give him one. But he will buy, sell the same car back to the previous owner for less, of course. There's no point for the previous owner to, to buy it again with the same price or a higher price. There is no point. It will be sense. Yeah, it, it doesn't make any sense. So the, the, the previous owner will give him 10,000 cash. You see the problem here? What is the problem here? Huh? What's the problem here? He bought this car from him on a credit sale for 12,000. And it's a credit sale. He's supposed to pay him back within 12 months. But then he takes this car and he would make an agreement with the same person and he will sell it back to him for 10,000. What's the problem here? The creditor and buyer are the same person. No, there is a clear problem here. That is not, huh? Two, you can, يعني basically in Islam you can, are allowed to combine between transactions unless this combination leads to riba or to dhulm or to gharar, uncertainty, something that is haram. So here there is a problem in it. If you, if you figure out then you understand, yeah, mashallah, you are, uh, yes. The, well, there is no borrowing here, uh, landing, uh, landing relationship, but it's a sale. The first one was a sale. Transaction was a sale. The second one was a sale. So it's not a loan. The first one was not a loan. It's a credit sale. He doesn't have the cash. This is what. He sold the vehicle. Back to the same person. I know, that, I mean, he's good, he's giving, he's receiving cash in his hand. There is 2,000 difference. So what's the problem? <laughs> this is a form of riba, jama'ah. Because the car here, just a medium to make it halal. He gave him 10,000 and he will receive back from him 12,000. It's a form of riba. I want you to use the term riba. It's a form of riba. It's called bay al -ina. Because the car is not meant here. It's used actually to facilitate a haram arrangement. But if he sells it to someone else, there is no connection between the first transaction and the second one. He goes and sells it to another one. If he sells it in the market to someone else, there is no relationship between the two transactions. The, the first the seller of the car who made the credit sale is not benefiting. The only thing he benefiting is a sale, that he made a sale. And this is halal. Halallahu al-bay'a wa harram al-riba. The second option, it's riba. So anyway, tawarruq, which is the first case, is a way of getting cash in your hand. If you want to do it, it's halal. But if you do it with a company, with a dealer, he will might put a lien on the car, and then by the time you sell it, I think he will ask you to for immediate repayment. Am I right or wrong? Yes. Huh? Yeah, if you sell it, they will ask you for immediate, so you don't benefit from it. But if you make a private arrangement, then you can benefit from this. I'm saying this because there are some Muslims who believe that he doesn't own, fully own the car unless he fully paid it. It's paid off. Then he becomes the owner of this car. No, that's not true. The moment you make this agreement with the seller, even if it is a credit sale, then it is your ownership. And you can do whatever you want with it. Number one. Number two, number two another halal option for you know, securing some cash in your hand. Something called tanda. And tanda is, is a South American term. In Arabic, it's called jam'iyat al muwaddafin so it is like a voluntary rotating loan association or, a, or, a, or it's called informal loan club. So people get together, it's a form of a short term interest and free, yani interest free, interest free loan within family members and friends. People come together, they use the concept of uh, money pool. Everyone would put uh, like every month $500 or 1000 contributes 1000 to the pool. And then every month one person 
from the team will take the whole amount. Right? It's called uh, in Arabic, as I said, they call them in the Arab world, Jam'iyyad al Muwaddafin, and it is known in different cultures, in different uh, societies. In South America, they call it Tanda. But if you check this term, you have to be careful. There is a method in financial institutions called Tanda Financial, they deal with riba. But there are apps, you have to be careful about them, apps. I don't know if all of them have some problems, but they do, they follow the same concept online. People do, no, do not know each other. Five people online, they come together and they do this kind of arrangement. I don't know how they secure the payment, and, but there are apps. But the problem with these apps, some of them, they do what? The, the, uh, they don't do a draw. Islamically, either you do a draw or you see who is in need for money, then you, class it, you put them in the, in the beginning, like number one or two and three. These people need cash immediately. So as a brother, you cooperate with them and you said, okay, you take first month, Mr. Muhammad will take the 10,000. Second month, Ali will take the 10,000. Third month, uh, because they need money, right? But, or the other, the other way is you do Qur'a, Qur'a, which is the draw, right? And then you pick the names, whoever his name appears first, he will take the first amount. It's called Tanda, as I said, there are apps. These apps, the people who take first, they will charge them some fees. And the, t the people who like to be at the end of the list, they will give them some uh, extra money. So this is riba, right? But this is, uh, I mean, as I said, it's known popular in many cultures, in many societies, but it is possible to do it in a halal way without any increase, to do it in halal. The only thing is, you have to be careful. You have to know the people. The people you do it with them, you have to know them very well. You have to know them. I know a story where some ladies, a group of ladies, came together and did this arrangement. One lady took 40,000, and if she fled the country. 40,000. It's not going to buy her Jannah, but this is the, you know, the weakness of, you know, as humans, we have this weakness, love for money, subhanAllah. And we are sometimes willing to gamble with our akhirah, our future, our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a small amount of money. Anyway, so this is something that is halal. There are some ulama who said it is halal as long as you don't, uh, you don't stipulate, you don't make a condition on the team members to participate in a second round. It is a matter of disagreement. But this is uh, simple. It's very easy to, uh, if you want people to participate in a second round and a third round, don't make it a condition. Give them the freedom. But then they participate in the first round. Someone said, okay, Jazakum Allah Khair, I benefited from this. I don't want to participate in a second round. It's okay, you replace him with someone else. Right? If you want to do it for the second round. Don't make it a condition. If you don't make it a condition, then it is purely halal. Inshallah, there is no, no problem. There is no problem with it. Just give me a few, uh, few minutes and then we, we finish. Inshallah, we'll ha we still have time till uh, 9.30, Inshallah, for Isha. But I'll finish within two minutes. Now, uh, I want you to say to, to, uh, to know something. Yani Rasulullah made a very strong statement about those who delay the repayment of their loans on purpose. So he said, Matlu al ghaniyi dhulmun. He said, Matlu al ghaniyi dhulmun. Matlun, yani the delay in repaying a debt by someone who is wealthy or someone is able is a form of injustice. Ibn Hajar al Haythami, one of the classical scholars, counted it as a major sin. There are people who do it. And those people, you know, those ahadith that I mentioned last Friday, that a uh, uh, person could be denied access to Jannah until he settles his account with the debtor, the creditor, until the, his problem, debt problem are solved, right? This problem could deny him access to Jannah, the ahadith. It's about those people who on purpose delay the repayment. They have the means, but they, they delay the payment. They want to use the money. He's a businessman, and he doesn't want to pay his 10,000 on time. He said, I will use it in my business. Rasulullah said, this is a form of injustice. 
This is a form of injustice. You agreed with him to pay him back after six months, then you have to pay him back after six months if you have the means. If you don't have, you can make a request for a delay, right? Or you look for another solution, another loan, you get another qard hasan from someone else, and you pay him back. But don't do it on purpose, because it is a form of injustice. I received some questions from some brothers. Credit card, we talked about it. Is cash back amount from Visa okay? Cash back is a gift from Visa company. So if, if you think that you are using this visa because you are facing a pressing need, right? This is your assessment, your own assessment. I cannot, myself, I cannot make an assessment on behalf of everyone. It's your own judgment. If you believe that you need it and it is a pressing need, then this cash back was, would be halal for you because it is a gift from the company. But there are ulama, the ulama who believe that this is an interest-based agreement. We shouldn't own these cars, we shouldn't use them. So they don't believe this is halal. Wallahu ta'ala. But if you are doing it on a, with a valid reason, using this card with, because you have a valid reason, then this should be halal, cash back, it's a gift. Because the, the company is not the, is not the lender, uh, sorry, yeah. Uh, the, the company is the lender and you are the borrower, right? But the lender is giving the borrower in this case. What is haram is the borrower giving, borrowing person, the borrower giving a gift to an extra money to the lender. This is what is haram. This is what is interest. Can we open saving accounts? Our ulama said if there is no need for them. We shouldn't open saving accounts, we should open checking accounts with no interest. Because with every saving account they give you interest, right? Unless there is a need for it. Mathana, it's a vehicle for you to save taxes. To reduce your taxes, that's a different story. You feel like there is a need for it and you monitor this account. And you give this interest as a donation. You know this is an interest that you give it as a donation. If you feel like that there is a need for you to open this saving account because you want, you want to have RSP or RSP for your children or as I said you need a vehicle to save to reduce your taxes for this purpose yeah it could be inshallah permissible but you have to monitor your account uh, and donate this interest uh, now mortgage and uh, I received some questions from another brother about mortgage the fatwa of some other scholars like Sheikh Yusuf Al Qaradawi. We talked about it. We have I have maybe five lectures about this subject online. You can you can listen to it. Uh, we might talk about it inshallah in the future in our workshop. It will be at the end of the month. Most likely the information will be available about this workshop. Uh, maybe tomorrow, maybe tomorrow inshallah or after tomorrow uh, on our website. Um, now I'll, uh, I'll just uh, give you time for your questions now. Uh, we still have like 15 minutes for Isha, inshallah. Or before, before, I, uh, before, uh, before we deal with your questions, I have still two Friday halakhas. And inshallah, the next halakha, March 22nd, it will be in the new location. Right? Bithnillahi ta'ala. So we'll open this location, the new location, March 22nd. We might keep this for Friday prayers, five daily prayers, till the end of the month. But the first Jum'ah, the next Jum'ah will be there, inshallah, and Friday Halaqa will be in the new location, and you know the address. It's everywhere. Now, I want to make mashura with you. I have two uh, other Halaqat, uh, actually four, but two of them related to this subject. One of them is called Financial Justice with Family Members. It will include wills, will documents, and inheritance the issues to, you know, and will. The importance of writing a will in this in this land. I didn't do it this presentation. I did it in other places, but didn't do it in IC. This is one option, and the second option. There are some beautiful du'as that Rasulullah supplications taught us for someone who wants Allah to help him to pay his loans, pay back his loans. Do you want to learn about these du'as? Yes. Huh? Yes. yes. So we do them in halaqa, we explain them, 
and I'll try to put them in a PowerPoint presentation so you can see the dua in front of you and then we'll talk about their meanings. And Do you want to do that? Yes. Okay, are you interested in the other uh, subject which is will documents and inheritance? Yes. Okay, because the other options are shura, the importance of shura, we might do it on a different occasion. And uh, the other option that I had in mind, the mentality of al-khawarij. <laughs> It's a different, it's a different, uh, a different subject. So maybe next time we will do the financial justice with family members, and it is a PowerPoint presentation. The other one will be, inshallah, too, the du'a supplications will be a PowerPoint presentation. Bidni Allah uh, Taala. So uh, we will uh, we we'll go with this option, inshallah. Now your questions. Yes, brother, go ahead. Yeah. But the monthly service fee is very high. But they, so they tell you if you have a certain amount of they, they, they allow you to what? To open an account just like anybody else. They allow you to, have to open an account, bank account. You open an account with them and they tell you that if you don't pay this monthly fee a month, ten dollars per month or fifteen dollars, if you have a certain amount of money in your account, they will waive this fee, you won't pay monthly fee. And then you will get other benefit they give you other benefits. They say you can have your credit card, have a first class uh, Travel visa where you don't pay, you don't pay yearly, 150 monthly yearly membership. You don't pay, and then they they waive. So, uh, so you can have one visa which you, maybe you need it or not, and then they're gonna waive your monthly fee as long as you maintain your account set and balance in your account. So, what would you say about that? Is that uh, permissible? And in that visa, first class visa, you if you use it a lot, traveling or buying stuff, you get uh, points. Points is like cashback. Right. As I said, if you believe, this, this is your assessment. You believe you are using this card for a valid reason. There is a pressing need for you to use it. You can benefit from points or cashback. When it comes to waiving the fees, I, uh, this matter was discussed by a Muslim scholar who wrote a PhD about this uh, subject, loans. Rules regarding loans and debts. And he discussed this matter, two opinions, among contemporary scholars. One of them, they said it's permissible. The other one said it could be makruh. But based on his analysis, he, he found out, I read his analysis, it should be fine, it should be halal. So when, when you keep 15,000 in your account, they, they waive the monthly fees for you, right? So this is halal, inshallah. Right? You don't have to pay them these fees. Okay, this is number one. Number two, tfaddal. The bro okay, I, okay, go ahead, go ahead. I meant this brother, but go ahead. Go ahead. The situation is uh, the lender is paid, uh, giving the money in the world $1,000. The lender? The lender is paid, uh, giving the money in the world $1,000. As a loan? Yeah, as a loan, $1,000. Okay. I'm asking them, uh, the lender is paying the money in the world $1,000. Okay. Then the lender is giving the money in the world $1,000. Okay. And the Yeah. Now, technically, uh, the person who has gave the money is getting the exact amount which he was giving to the One, one thousand Canadian dollars. But the, the, but the other person is losing money. He's paying thousand extra. Extra. Is it, it is permissible. This is the way it is. He got from him one thousand in Canadian. He should pay him one thousand in Canadian. That's why Rasulullah what did he say? He said, if you decide to pay him back in a different currency, let's say rupees, Pakistani rupees, then it should be with the current rate of exchange. And the current rate of exchange will be 130,000, right? He, instead of giving him 100,000, he should give him 130,000. So the person, this person, the owner of this 1,000 Canadian, if he goes to the market and makes the exchange, he will receive for 130,000 his own money. One Canadian. And this is adala, justice. If you think about it, this is ultimate justice. Right? Wallahu ta'ala alam. Yes, brother. So, RESP or RRSP or the pension plan. So, RESP, we all know that we have to open a saving account which you collect interest there and you donate it. But uh, in order to kind of like benefit from the money, 
if you want to go and invest it, there's a limited option for you when you can invest it because it's not only your money, there's the government money. Yep. So you go to the bank, like the PC bank, they tell you you can only invest in these five or six categories, and the, the bond is one of them, it was my question here. So there are some bonds that the least in financial institution involvement in that, which is like utilities. <coughs> You mean the companies? Yeah. The, uh, Akhi, Akhi Karim, uh, regarding RESP, you're asking if it is halal or not? Well, the investment in a, in a bond where there's uh, zero risk of losing, but there's a, a little bit of... Uh, it's guaranteed. guaranteed. Yeah, the, the revenue is, or the return is guaranteed. In Sharia, investment cannot be guaranteed. It's, a, it's, a for, it's an interest, like interest. Cannot be guaranteed. Right? It cannot. So either you go for a self-directed saving account, self-directed, and you don't, you leave the money and you don't invest it. Or the other option, there, are, there is something called Sharia indexes, Sharia indexes, like we have here in Canada, it's called SMP, Sharia 60 index. You can invest in their companies, right? And uh, they tell you, if you go and study their, uh, they have a policy there and they have a criteria they follow, you can read about them and do your research. Or you do another research about some p companies in Toronto area that are offering a halal RESP. I don't have a clear idea about those companies, but you can make some research, find out some of them, how, you know, how halal are they, Allahu alam. And I'm not sure, but you can make a research and help us get, get you know, help us with some in more information about them. I don't have any, a, a company in mind that tell you they are offering halal RESP. But you can open this account for your children. You get the money from the government, it's halal. The only money that would be haram, the interest that would come from the, the bank. If it is a saving account, you need to donate this uh, interest coming to the account. So you deposit some money, your money is halal. Money coming from the government is halal. There is some interest coming from the bank. Give it a, as a donation to, to, you know, to help your children get this help or this money from the government. If you want to invest, as I said, there are some companies that are uh, yani saying that they have halal RRSP or RSP, especially in Toronto area, or you invest in what is called Sharia indexes. Yeah. Naam ya akhi, tfaddal. Yeah, the fees, yeah. It's okay, I mean, uh, because uh, the, you, are, you are the lender, and they are the borrowers. So they are not supposed to pay you extra money. But you are paying this fees because of their services. They have bank machines, they have a debit card. So they're giving you services with this loan, with this deposit. So the ulama, they said these are Fees, administrative fees, and they are halal. I, I don't know if there is non-interest saving account. Okay, that's good. Then this is a good option. This is a good option. Yeah, mashallah. Good information. I didn't know that. Non-interest saving account. Okay. RBC, yeah? Okay. Then you don't have to worry about riba in your account. Go ahead. Stores that give you a credit sale? Yeah, if there is no third party involved. But usually there is a third, but if it, there is no third party, it is between you and them. It should be halal. It's called bay'a taqsid. Bay'a taqsid. What kind of fee? You need to know what. Yeah, it's okay. That's fine. Yeah. So, and the only thing is, I mean, I'll give you the basic principle and then you try, if you, uh, talk to them. If there is no uh, 
documents to be signed from a third party right because I know one time I went to a furniture store I was talking to him I said you know the one if you get buy this with a credit the one who will give you the loan finance the deal is a different company so he will sell them your information and then they tell him the response if this person has a good credit or not so it's a third com company financing company who will give you the loan pay on your behalf the full amount let's say, it's, say you buy this furniture for five thousand this company will pay for the whole amount but there are some companies they have their own credit department like Toyota Toyota credit right their own or uh, some other companies they have their own financing department if you are dealing with them with an extra with a different price a higher price it's halal here time of value of money is accepted in this case because it is a credit sale right credit sale and you're gonna pay within two years or three years to increase the price for this purpose it's halal this is not riba there are people who said oh this is like riba this is not riba this is a sale they're not giving you a loan they are selling something to you with different terms don't compare it with riba don't compare it with when the bank and a financial or a financial institution that has nothing to do with the transaction it has nothing to do with the item being sold they come in because they want to make money out of money so they give you the loan they pay on your behalf and then whatever profit they make it's a form of riba I know I know I know what you mean I know what you mean so they give you like a grace period yeah so it will become like the concept of visa or a, or a credit card, any credit card. Yeah, and if you think that there is a pressing need for you to buy this item, there is. A, so you need to uh, pay on time, and also if you can get get rid of late fees, or pay on time so you don't end up paying late fees. So late fees is another form of riba. So you try your best to fear Allah Subhanahu wa Taala as much as you can, do business in a halal way as much as you can. We live in a different environment, by the way. Yani the financial system that is built now, that's being built, was not built with, you know, with Sharia in mind or Islamic values in mind. So that's why we are finding it difficult to buy things and and buy houses and do and do business in a halal way. Not, it's not because Islam is difficult. It's not because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala wants to make things difficult for Muslims. No. Because the environment we are dealing with is a different environment. Anyway, now, sisters, you don't have a question. If you want, if you uh, you don't want to ask, you can write down your questions and send them if you want. We have only three minutes left. Tfadl, uh, Sheikh. Do we have to include timeline in the debt agreement between two persons? Back in Middle East, uh, uh, you need someone. When you going to pay it back, you say, Hina, my <laughs> Is that No, it is not. You have the right to. So the brother is asking back home when we give a loan to, to each other. When you tell him when you're going to pay me back, he will say, when well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it easy. <laughs> <laughs> it is not accepted. I mean, it's, uh, you have to have a deadline. Even if it is verbal, right? You need to have a deadline. Uh, and don't get offended if your brother asks you for a date of repayment or if he asks you to write down the loan. Uh, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us to do in Surah Al-Baqarah. Ayat al-Dayn, you know that the longest ayah in Surah al uh, in the Quran, in the whole Quran, is Ayat al-Dayn. A verse, one verse, full page, talking about these etiquettes of uh, you know how to deal with loans and debts and also you can ha have a guarantor you can ask for a guarantor especially if it is a big amount will you have the right to ask for a guarantor to two witnesses to sign the the contract with you as witnesses so all these things are there in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, sister yeah go ahead
She was denied, yani. Yeah, so it's the same thing, yani. There are some landlords here who ask for a credit history. Anyway, this could be, uh, uh, and if you feel, as I said, the assessment, I will leave it to you. Anta tabibu nafsik. If you think that you need it, you really need this card, you can have one card in your pocket and you use it when you need it. You don't use it every day on a daily basis. So you can collect points. Okay, don't do it this way. Stay away from this as a nasiha. From your brother, stay away from it because, you know, and there are people who, yes. But then if you never use it, you never get a credit. No, you use it when you need it. No, but and you build some credit. Yeah, as I said, when you need it, you're gonna, when you book a, car, a hotel room, when you uh, make a reservation, or you book a car, and you'll be using it. And then you build some credit. Huh? Multiple times you go open the door for evil for yourself. As I said, people who got it with this intention, inshallah, I'm Muslim, I'm not going to deal with riba, I will just uh, use it when I need it, right? And then they started using it every time and they ended up sometimes, they faced an emergency to get a loan, you know, advanced. When you get a loan, cash, the, the company charge you interest right away. They don't give you a grace period. And then they come to the masjid talking, looking for the imam, <laughs> asking about a solution or an exit. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That, shuf, when you use it only when you need it, you're showing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, I know that this could be haram, but I'm using it only at times of need. You see the point? But you see the point? You're, you are not like someone who uses it every day with every transaction. He doesn't care. You know what I mean? It becomes normal, part of his daily life. So you are, the, the message that you are sending to your creator Ya Allah, I'm using it only at times of need. Okay? Jazakumullah khairan. Subhanakallah, alhamdulillah, shadu Allah, ilaha illa, nasaghfiruka wa natubu ilaha.